And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're going to talk about Cloud Spire. Cloud Spire is a big game. It is a really hefty game. It's made from Chip Theory Games, who make some exceptionally good quality games. In fact, Cloud Spire won for the best component quality from the Dice Tower in 2019, because it's really that good. So, this is not a full review. This will just be my first impressions of the game, because I don't feel like I played it enough to give it a full review, and I don't know that I will, so I want to give you some of my thoughts on it. You can find other full reviews, and I, one of our folks in the studio, uh, Mike Delisio, really loves this game and has played it. There's a whole solo scenarios and cooperative scenarios and things that you can play in this game, and I know he really likes it. I also like it. I do not love it. My initial rating here would probably be a 7 out of 10, but that's because, and the same reason I don't know how often I'll go back to it, because I feel like each time I play it, I would have to go and go, all right, this is going to be some getting into the game. And part of that is this here. So this is a player board, and I'm going to come up and show this to the camera here. So this is all the different buildings and things you can build for one of the factions. And then this is all the special abilities that that faction can have. That is a lot. Now this is very similar to their last game, Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones had the same thing going on in it, although I feel like this is much more than that. The problem is, and the difference for the games, and the reason I like Too Many Bones more, is because of Too Many Bones, I had my character, I had all these things, I learned about them, great. In this game, especially the competitive version of this, I kind of need to know what your board says and does. And there's also a, another whole extra board here for um, just the, the, the random stuff that you find on the board. So this is a tower defense game, uh, or maybe even a MOBA style game, because you have your own area and you are building units each turn. And you have a ton of units. You have so many options in this game. Every time you play, it's going to be different, and people are going to like that. And the game has this, I felt, artificial ramping up phase, where each phase you get more points and things, and you, you're going to send things out in waves, and your opponents are going to be also sending things out in waves, and as these waves come up against each other, they will fight, um, and then they'll come into your area where you've built towers, the towers will shoot at them, and they might get through and blow stuff up. Meanwhile, there's neutral stuff on the map, and other places you can find and build towers. And there is a level of complexity here that's pretty high. Uh, you might argue and say, well, the game's not that hard once you get to know it. Yes, but there's still a very high level of complexity. Much of that complexity has to do with the fact that there's this much stuff going on. And it, you know, if they're playing, I'm still like, well, what does that do? What does that do? There's a lot of terms, a lot of things going on. Now, that variety is amazing. The, the factions that are included in here feel really different. There's some really cool things, and each faction also then has various tracks that they can follow and do, and that's pretty neat. I'm not convinced this game works as well with multiple players. It seems like I would prefer playing it best either cooperatively or as a two-player game where I'm coming to destroy your towers and you're coming to destroy mine rather than I played one three-player game and we're just, you know, going after the person to our right's towers and some weird mess-ups in the middle. There's also some terrain. The terrain here uses the neoprene mats and stuff, and that's all cool. But I felt like maybe there was maybe a few too many things in here that I had to check. And you say, well, Tom, you said you liked the game. Yeah, I did because, I mean, Let's not lie, I'm somewhat enamored with the production. The production's great. Poker chips, using they use the same thing where you have these po beautiful poker chips and then you have other poker chips underneath that are your health. And I also like that the different units in here, that there was an upgraded version of them, that you have these heroes and the unique powers, and I am really caught up in that. I'm sitting here going, oh, man, because you can't do everything in this game. There's, you can't even come close to building all your buildings or playing with all your units. So you have to decide which ones you're going to use. And you're trying to outthink your opponent. But I will say... The game has some downtime at the beginning of each one. Now it's downtime that I'm not too worried about because I'm spending all of it sitting there going, I'm going to do this, I'm going to build this, I'm going to do that, do that, do that, by these mercenaries. And there's not a whole lot of interaction. And then it's like, boom, now that we've set it up. So what I would actually uh, bring that analogy to would be to like a deck building game. Uh, not a deck building game, a collectible card game. Uh, what's a Magic the Gathering? 
I spend a good chunk of time building my deck, and then we play each other. That's what this game feels like. I spend a bunch of time at the beginning of each of the, the turns building up my army, deciding what I'm going to do, how I'm going to place them out on the board, what the order is going to be, and then we just go... Boom, and we kind of watch them go. There's some you can move your heroes around. Everyone else kind of just runs straight for the enemy. And there's a lot of automated stuff in there. And so there's more prep than anything else. But you still get to make decisions. And your heroes can still run around. So I don't know if this is helping anybody or not, really. Um, but like I said, this is a pretty solid game for me. But if I had my druthers, I would want to play it with someone who's played before, that knows the game, so that I don't have to keep looking up the rules that I can just ask them instead. Because there's that much going on. This is very close to a lifestyle game. But where it does not reach the heights of too many bones, I think I like that game better because I felt that I was I had my one character, I was building them up, and we're working together in a tactical, and I love tactical battles anyway. Um, but I didn't have to worry about what everyone else did. We kind of worked together, obviously. It's a cooperative game. Here, I really do need to know what my opponent is, and so that constant having to stop. So when I played this, I said, you know what, don't even tell me your stuff does, just tell me when it happens, and that's all well and good, but I'm not going to win then. Like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. I would have prepared for it. But preparing for it and doing it takes more effort in the long run. Still, it's a very impressive feat, Cloud Spire. Uh, they're definitely a company to keep an eye on, for sure. This is too... Uh, games that are extremely popular right in a row. Um, and if you want to see more, we'll have more reviews. And I'm sure that Mike either has done a solitaire or will do it in the future. But that's Cloud Spire, my first impressions of it. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you all later.